secret to success as a media composer, developing long-lasting and meaningful relationships with directors. Burton, Elfman, Nolan, Zimmer, Wright, Marianelli. We're familiar with the many examples of director-composer relationships that have drilled down and hit rich seams of creative movie music gold. But the reason why fledgling film composers are offered up the you need to build relationships with directors as the most common piece of careers advice I always hear is because I believe the most fruitful, successful and enduring relationship in Hollywood history is between a composer and a director, Spielberg Williams. I know, I'm at the airport, started at the train station, forgot laptop have a meeting, was going to miss the meeting if I missed the train, had to go back home to get the laptop. It's been an expensive morning. I'm skeptical though. I'm not sure that is the best primary piece of careers advice we can give fledgling film composers. The reason I say that is that, that is exactly the advice I was given, that the relationship with directors was the most important thing that you must strive for. And I have to say, I approached every new relationship with the director trying to be their new busy buddy and I'm not sure that's the best approach. So my reticence in accepting the assumption that the key and sole route to success as a film composer is based on building strong relationships with directors is based on three observations that I've made uh, throughout my career. The first is a return to my analogy of directors being like uh, racing car drivers. Now imagine you're basically part of the pit squad for a trophy winning rally car driver. Now he gets poached by Formula One. Do you think he's going to be able to take his entire pit crew to work on those very expensive McLarens? Conversely, when Hollywood comes knocking for the director that you've done maybe half a dozen independent movies with, they will be confident that that director can develop a script, position cameras in interesting places, direct actors, supervise and edit, but they will ensure that the director delivers the product they need by surrounding them with a team of highly professional, experienced individuals. And whilst it may be depressing to part ways with a director who you've done half a dozen low-budget independent movies with, you have to understand that your job to the director is that of film composer. Your job to the producer, the person that pays you, is that of head of department. And whilst the job of composing music to a Hollywood blockbuster may not differ massively from that of composing music to an independent movie, the job of head of department is entirely different. And what producers need to see is that you're going to be able to deliver the product at the level that the director is being pulled up to. And the only way they can get proof of that, it's not by kind of psychologically profiling you, they simply look as to whether you've done it before and have done it successfully. Which brings me on to my second observation, which is, you know, I get as many jobs out of other crew members as I do out of directors. Producers, naturally, they're the people who hire us, but also editors, post-production supervisors. And if anything's gonna bump you up kind of a notch, make you kind of go up in division, it may be you coming in as the cavalry on a job as a favour to a post-production supervisor or indeed another composer. So for me, what it's about is being a great composer delivering great music on time and being a kind of a lovely guy or a lovely girl. So it's not just about the directors. My third point is the landscape has changed entirely from when I was a fledgling film composer, so much so you should listen to what I say with a pinch of salt. TV is the new film and TV is structured entirely differently. You know, producers run the shows, not directors. Conversely, the more I speak to kind of young people, the more I understand that social media is as important as anything in building a career. So much so, you know, I'm really clueless about this. I'd really love to hear your stories about how social media has aided your career. I have a couple of mates who have some strong feelings about the importance of relationships. You know, I'm really skeptical about this when I think about it. People have been saying it to me for years. I've been saying it back to other people for years. Uh, but actually, how do you build a relationship with a director other than one that just happens naturally? Uh, it will happen sometimes, of course. But in truth, a lot of the time, directors are going to want to work with new people just to try out new ideas. But also, you know, as their careers progress uh, rapidly, 
um, they are often going to be put in a position where they simply can't bring you along anyway. I mean, if you imagine a situation where your director, you've done a couple of big dramas for, for the BBC, say, and then your director goes off to Hollywood to, to work on maybe an American drama where you know, there's already a composer already established, and then they get a movie, you know what's going to happen? The producer goes, you know what, we can, we can afford Alexandre Desplat for this movie. You know, what are they going to do? You know, he's going to go, you know what, I've got this great relationship with Drew back in London. He's fantastic. He's doing these BBC dramas. And, you know, the producer's just going to laugh, right? I mean, you know, you get the opportunity to work with someone, you know, like Desplat or whoever, and this happens all the time. Um, you know, they're going to bring in awards, they're going to bring in an audience, I mean, and you're going to have a chance to work with one of the greatest composers. Why wouldn't you take that opportunity as a director? So I think, you know, you have to be realistic anyway. But also, if you look at all the great collaborations, and I'm thinking back as far as um, Hitchcock and Bernard Herrmann, I mean, Bernard Herrmann was already incredibly established as a composer. Um, when he started working with Hitchcock, he'd been working with Orson Welles for years and years. You, you move forwards to, you know, say John Williams and Steven Spielberg. John Williams was already really established. Spielberg was the newcomer. Um, this is going to be a, you know, I'm going to go on and you're going to go, okay, yeah, I get it. I mean, Tim Burton and uh, uh, Danny Elfman, obviously a great example of a brilliant collaboration where they've worked on so many films together. But Tim Burton was unknown, and Danny Elfman came from pop, admittedly, and hadn't done any movies at that point, but he was already an established musician, well-known. So I think, unless you are at that stage, the likelihood of developing that relationship, and if you are at that stage, the, the relationship will just develop naturally. Um, I, I just don't think it's something to focus on. What I do think um, you should focus on, uh, if you're not doing it, is being a, an authentic artist in your own right. I think this is something that's really important. It's become really obvious to me over the last few years. Many people have said to me, you know, what, what are you doing for fun? What's your pet project? What's your passion project? Um, you know, what are you doing to indulge yourself? And I sort of look at them a bit strangely and say, well, this is it. You know, I've been working my whole life to get to the stage where I'm flat out working on TV and film work. And, you know, I love this. Why would I want to do something else? And I've realized that they're not really asking me, you know, what are you doing for fun? What they're asking me is, who are you as a creator? Who are you as an artist? And I think you have to demonstrate that. I, you know, when I go to your homepage on, on your website, I want to see the album you've just released on Spotify. I want to see, you know, the gigs you're doing with the, the strange uh, art house bands. You know, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be the quirkiest thing in the world, but it, it needs to show individuality and passion for creativity. And I think that if you can do that with authenticity, you can't do it in a sort of, uh, I'm not really into it, but I, I guess everyone needs an electronic around and so I'll just make one. You know, you've got to, it's got to be a reflection of you, but you know, find some time in the day, like everyone says to me, find some time to go running and I never do. Find some time in the day to, to, to make some music purely for its own sake and just put it out there. You know, it's close to free these days to put music out there, so just do it. And that will give uh, directors and producers a sense of what you can bring to their projects. I hope that's helpful. For me, the key thing about establishing a relationship with a filmmaker or a video game maker or anything, or a commercials director, anyone like that, is really about uh, shorthand. And by that, I mean that you start to be able to communicate without having to go into loads of detail and explaining things. And it's often good, not only because it short circuits your conversations, um, but also because you don't have to talk in musical terms. And that is the surest thing to kill musical creativity is someone uh, starting to tell you that the tune needs to be played on an oboe. Um, so for me, a relationship's all about shorthand. Like any relationship, it's like, well, it's like a relationship. Whilst we all dream of being part of a kind of Spielberg Williams type marriage, a marriage I'm sure that will be till death do they part, we have to also understand that creative relationships are brittle things. Some relationships are open. You look at maybe Soderbergh and Martinez. Soderbergh plays away from home with Ocean's Eleven a lot. Nolan had a composer that he worked with before moving on to Hans Zimmer. I guess it's kind of like bands. You know, not every band is going to be like the Rolling Stones or U2. You know, some are like the Beatles. They have six wonderful years doing wonderful albums and then they part ways. It may be fleeting, it may be promiscuous, it may be permanent. They are important, but I think the most important thing is to be 
just great at your job, great to work with and deliver the goods and for as many people as possible to see you doing that. I spent a wonderful day with a composer, arranger, orchestrator called Matt um, and he told me that the secret of his kind of the success that he's starting to generate in his career is wholly to do with social media and I think it was a very striking moment for me because what I'm realising is I'm, I'm giving out advice here in a world that is totally different and I think I have to be very cautious about saying this is the way you've got to do things. I don't think I can underestimate the importance of social media. So whilst I may have built a consensus as an old jobbing fogey, I think it's also really important to understand that your peers, the young people who are forging a career in this brave new world, possibly have a greater view on the importance of relationships in the context of social media and modern methods of creating contacts than I ever would have. So I guess what I'm saying is thanks as always for watching, but please ignore everything I say. Hit like if you like what I'm doing, subscribe if you haven't yet for more stuff that you can ignore, and if you want to be notified, hit that bell. See you next time.